So good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar for this week, where we're going to focus on Creo Illustrate and specifically how you can create 3D work instructions from your CAD models. And one of the biggest benefits of Creo Illustrate is you don't have to have a license of Creo to use it. You can have SolidWorks, you can have Autodesk, uh, Katia, whatever CAD system you are using, Creo Illustrate will take those CAD documents and be able to convert those into um, work instructions, service instructions, uh, anything else that you need in a 3D format to help, whether it's your staff, service staff in the field, your manufacturing staff, to be able to understand what the directions are and what they need to do. So without further ado, Paul Dye, who is a solutions consultant and Applications engineer with PTC's Virtual Center of Excellence is going to take us through this uh, this overview and demo. Paul, what do you think? About 20 minutes for this? Yeah, I think that sounds perfect. Okay, cool. If you have any questions, put them in the uh, Q&A section. And Paul, we can see your screen. Take it away, my friend. Awesome. So happy to be on. Of course, my name is Paul Dye, Solutions Consultant here with PTC. And yeah, we're going to go through and talk a little bit around Creo Illustrate today. It's definitely different than I'd say a lot of the extensions that we'll go through and show around Creo Parametric. It's a little bit more focused on a non-CAD user to be able to utilize. A lot of the extensions that you see in something like Creo Parametric are definitely for your designers and engineers. But this is a little bit more broad scoping as it relates to the people that are creating that service documentation. So someone that might not be using Creo Parametric at all actually might get a lot of good use out of this. So I'll go through and explain a little bit more to exactly what we're doing in Creo Illustrate, what it looks like to work from within Creo Illustrate, a couple of different examples. And like Rob mentioned, if you have any questions throughout, feel free to drop those in the Q&A and we'll touch on them as we go along. So let's go ahead and jump into it. And first thing I always like to do is go through the different challenges that we really look to address with the specific tool that we're working with here. So to start, just technical illustrations in general are extremely important for communicating information about your products, your parts, your services. Essentially, throughout your organization, you need clear documentation. And oftentimes, you need it in different styles, different formats. And one of the big problems is that you may have seen it's a very slow and tedious process typically to manually create these types of illustrations. And with that process being slow, it's rare, rare that you're ever working with the most up-to-date information in those manuals. And sometimes you have companies have a lot of these rich and accurate CAD models, which is great. It's a lot of great information to use. The problem typically is the illustrators that are creating documentation oftentimes either don't know or simply don't work with computer-aided design or CAD. Or even if they do work with CAD, oftentimes you don't have the tools that the illustrator really need to do that type of work. What, time, what a lot of times we see that leading to is you have your engineers or your designers. They're the ones that are actually creating the technical publication content. And that's not really what you want to be doing here. We're really using the wrong tool to do that. The designers should be designing their parts over in CAD, not building out the illustrations to be used in a manual. And it tends to be a pretty serial process where you can't even start into the illustration process until the design process is complete. So all that time that could be spent working on the illustrations and documentation, we're just waiting around. And Probably one of the biggest reasons for that serial process is because if you have any design changes, you have to go through and make manual updates. That's the way the world works nowadays. Your parts and the models, they're constantly being changed around and updated, so we have to be able to account for that. Or even worse, if a model or assembly gets changed and updated, but the manual doesn't, that's going to be grief for customers, users. It's something that we definitely need to avoid. So we have a solution to all of these different challenges here with Creo Illustrate. Now, Creo, is, Creo Illustrate is an application that's designed to create detailed illustrations directly from your 3D CAD data. So I'm going to be using all that CAD data, but I'm not going to have to work with the actual CAD data itself. And they're actually making these changes. And Illustrate is, again, really built out for a non-CAD user to be able to utilize. It's an illustration tool built to give the illustrator the tools that they really need and they really care about. And one thing that Rob mentioned, and it's very true, is that Illustrate doesn't really care where the CAD data came from. It could be from Creo, 
but it could also be a product view file, a step file, third party CAD, doesn't matter. We just go ahead and take it, bring it in graphically, and allow me, the illustrator, to do illustrations on it. And the result that you're going to get from working in Pre Illustrate is rich 2D and 3D technical illustrations. And with that, it's not all just lines and arcs. You can actually import things like the full bill of material structure, full control over the graphics. You can translate pieces, move things around, rotate components. It's very easy to control it from the bill of materials and also very easy to go through and build out things like callouts, something that I could manually define or I could even have the system build them out for us. So it knows where all those components, the sub-assemblies, where all those are located, so it's very quick and easy to get those exploded views built out associated with all those different callouts too. From here, we have an extended library for your different symbols or graphics, things such as hands or tools or arrows that you might want to utilize. It's a lot that we have out of the box there, but it's also completely extendable. So if there's any symbols or graphics that your team would like to use, feel free to add those in as well. So very easy to go through and work with those. Also a complete set of extensive graphical techniques for building out each of the steps for things like your figures, your different animations, you know, things such as thicker, thin lines for changing how certain parts of the model are rendered. You can do that, right? It's really extendable in that sense. You can do different cross-section views. These are all things that are going to be important for the illustrator. You know, a CAD designer might not care about things like thick and thin lines, but if you're going to go through and build these out to be put on paper or manual or PDF, let's go ahead and give you the ability to create what's going to look best there. And I'll go through and show what these different things look like. You also have the idea of working with animations. You can do a whole assortment of different animation steps to display a process. So you can have an assembly and show how everything goes together, maybe how it gets taken apart. Just go ahead and put all those different steps in, show how you would need to use the different tools and what it would look like for that front-end user. It makes it much more clear to see exactly what you need to do there. One thing to mention here, too, is that Career Illustrate is fully integrated in with our... PLM and service systems, so I can store all this information in Windchill, I could get data from Windchill, everything can be tied together there as well. And once I'm ready to publish the illustration, I have a lot of different options for publishing, all from that one single illustration. So I could save off different 3D, 2D vector, 2D raster, image files, product view files, animations, however I need to send it off downstream as well. All right, so with that, I can go ahead and work through a couple of different examples so you can see what this looks like here from within the context of Career Illustrate. All right, so again, you have your different layouts for all the different figures that we're going to uh, work from here. You have the uh, service bill of materials for the model that we're working with. And again, now you can see this uh, ski track that we're going to be doing all of our different figures around. All right, so here you can see all the different parts that are associated with that. It's going to highlight over there in the service bill of materials for you. So again, all that 3D source material is going to help us out for creating the different illustrations that we're going to be working with. Again, like I mentioned earlier, you can move things around. You can assemble things, transform them, rotate them. You can hide or show anything that you might want to focus on. Or if you only want to see a particular subsection of the assembly, we can go through there and hide anything that might not be important. You can also go through and check out some of the different render modes here. So you can see shaded with reflections. We can go through and do, see it from a black and white view with thick and thin lines. Or again, if it's going to be going into a manual, you can go through and change what might look best there from your perspective. Here you can see the different creation of our exploded lines. Again, it's going to be very straightforward because all the different parts understand all those home locations. So it's going to make it quick and easy to change things up. And, for example, if you'd like to restore the location of any of those parts, that's always just going to be a click away. Even if you've moved a lot of things around and you want to restore everything to its home location, that's also just going to be a click away as well. All right, so here we can go through, and if we would like to as well, you could change where those home locations are located. So if you did want to assemble things together that weren't initially together, you could go through and do that as well. Here we can see some of the different tools and the symbols that we're working with here for bringing different things into my figure. So a lot of ones that we can pull in out of the box there for hammers or different tools that you might use from within there, pliers, Allen key, wrench. Also our different signs that we could pull in. 
So, for example, here, if there's a potential fire hazard at a particular step from within that assembly or disassembly, definitely want to be aware of that. You can see that there. All right. Again, quick look here at the source material. So you can see all those different links, for example, there, some of the different figures that we're working with. All right, and there you're always able to reference back in with any of those figures. So just take a quick scroll through here so you can see with some of that information. All right, there we go. So we can go ahead back into our model here and work through some of the couple of examples that we have laid out here. All right, so let's highlight on a couple key capabilities that we're working with. Here, for example, we have that phantoms, uh, phantom view that we can see through the ski tracks. So if your models are getting pretty complex and you want to see some internal components or be able to select through certain parts of the model, definitely a nice feature in that sense. And with this one in particular, we have a 2D drawing that's going to be associated with that 3D model. So our 2D drawing capabilities are going to be very powerful here from within Illustrate. So this is going to project that 3D model onto a 2D vector projection. In this case, I have some of the hidden lines removed, so it makes it very nice for me to work with the model, change things around, clean things up, delete things that I don't like, or add things in as I see fit. And one of the really good things here is that, again, we have that link back to the 3D parent. So if we go through and do any work here, we change things around, move one of these wheels out or really any type of work that we're doing here we're just going to go through and make some example changes of what you might be doing at a particular step what you're going to see is over on the left hand side the 2d drawing is going to show that it's out of date so again we can just go ahead and re-render that here very quickly it's going to update to show some of that uh, change that was made there so making sure that you have that associativity between the two is going to be very important and making sure that you're updating for any changes and you don't have any break in that link. So you can go ahead and keep moving on here to look at some of the different callouts. So this is, again, formatted for a particular page size. We have some different detailed views here that show some particular information to the model. And again, everything that we reference there is going to be cross-highlighted between the different views and the different detail views that you can see there up at the top. And some of the metadata that we're pulling from the model is also being displayed down there in the bottom right-hand corner. So you can see some of the different attributes that we could pull in from that source CAD. And again, a lot of different things that we could utilize there for the names, the values, the feature information, could be things that were created over in your CAD environment, could also be different attributes that were created over in Windshow as well. So any of that information we could go ahead and pull in and show there. So and for example, here we have native name, part name, feature ID, all going to be associated for what we're looking at there. All right, next quick ability that we're going to take a look at is going to be our different animations and sequences. In general, this is going to really give us the ability to bring these models and assemblies to life. Sequences are very useful for breaking up those animations into step-by-step -step procedures that we can use in a number of different ways. So in this sequence here, what we have is our first step. And it's going to be highlighting and removing a nut and a washer. And then from there, the next. Awesome. So yeah, just going to work through a couple of different animations here. And the sequence that you can see here has a couple of different warnings associated with that. And these steps can be used anywhere from a series of images over an instruction manual, all the way up to different augmented reality experiences that we support through Vuforia. A lot of different ways we could utilize this. So looking here, we have our step editor. This is where you can manage all the different steps from within the procedure, along with the different effects and the timing for each of those steps. So if we go ahead and work through some of these, you can see all the camera tracks that make up that animation. And you can see it flashes, expands out, fades away. Uh, same thing for steps two in that process. So if you change any of the steps there, our keyframe editor down there at the bottom is going to update and show the different effects that we're using. In that case, it means changing the color of the spring and having that caution sign appear. And we can work through an example and show what it looks like to create a step here. So what I want to do now is have that caution sign fade out, and we want to highlight on the next nut that needs to be removed. So these are very easy to access, all the different effects that you want to work with. You just select what you want right from the top, and Illustrate makes it very straightforward. And these animations are, again, bringing these models to life.
It's not just going to be words or maybe a picture on a page. It's rich, meaningful content, leaves a lot less up to the imagination, and does a great job of showing each of those steps. Okay, the last view that we have here on the left is more of a traditional exploded view, showing all the different parts here from within the subassembly. This is a bill of materials view. Illustrate has the capability of attaching our different annotations to each of those parts. So very useful for something like a parts catalog viewer, where you can select on a part, and it's going to highlight right in that view as well. And along with that, Illustrate will build out a table of information that gives us that view in the illustration. All right, so that's a quick look at the different figures that we have in the project. And now I can go through and show some of the different options that you have whenever it's time to publish these illustrations to be used in whatever application that has been designed for. You can see Illustrate supports different three-dimensional outputs, two-dimensional vector outputs, 2D raster outputs, uh, videos for the animations and the sequences. And whenever we publish out, we'll just simply select what figures that we want to send to which format. And for each of these, I can say you know, whether I want a 3D PVC or a 2D vector or raster. And if you wanted to go even deeper here, you can see for each of these different publish options, you have complete control over how we're going to generate that file. Depending on the type of content that you work with there, you can change different things like the height, the width, aspect ratio, all things for an image, or a lot of more options there for a raster file. And that's all being done just to make sure that the end product is really going to be exactly what you want before you go ahead and share off however you need that downstream. Awesome. So just a quick look there at some different examples. Again, it's very broad in terms of the different use cases that we're able to support with Illustrate, but ultimately it's giving us a lot of value throughout that process. And it starts by having these illustrations linked back to that 3D source. It makes it much faster for me to begin, build out those illustrations, and even that much faster whenever it comes to making updates to the illustration whenever there's changes being made to the CAD files. And I can do that process completely independent from the original engineering resources as well. So even if I'm getting some files from Creo, others from third party, I can work completely in my own environment. And it's completely pain-free from my end. It's cutting back the amount of duplicate work that we have. You no longer need to build out a new illustration whenever a CAD designer goes through and makes a change. And it's going to allow me to maximize the use of our illustrations to whatever documentation that you're building out. Allow me to include more pictures, more detail, and at the same time, increase our accuracy. And from a business perspective, it's also giving us a lot of value, right? It's giving us accelerated time to market. You don't have to wait to ship a product because you're waiting on the service manual to be completed. None of that. You just have the illustrations and the documentation done much more concurrently. And it's going to make our customers and our users happy at the end of the day. You know, there's nothing worse than having manuals or instructions that are incomplete or inaccurate or outdated. We want to make sure everything's accurate and graphically clear throughout that. Okay, that covers everything that I wanted to touch on today. Again, if there's any questions, feel free to drop those in. But with that, I can pass it back over to you, Rob. Well, thank you very much for a great job as always, despite the uh, little Zoom hiccups. I mean, it happens from time to time. Uh, kind of rare with our webinars that we do have a some type of issue. Very rare, but hey, man, it's okay. Still got some great content and a uh, great presentation, so thank you. Um, I will have this uh, webinar recording um, posted up tomorrow onto our YouTube page, and I'll send an email out to everybody who registered so you can have access and watch this again at your leisure, and feel free to share it with anyone that you feel would uh, benefit from, from uh, this information. Uh, next Thursday, we're going to have a webinar on uh, sharing data and collaboration within the value chain. Um, during your product development process. So that is a uh, product data management, product lifecycle management type of webinar regarding wind chill. So that will be next Thursday at noon. And I will be sending an invitation out uh, to you um, this Friday also. So once again, if you have any questions or need any other information, want to see a more detailed demonstration on Creo Illustrate, or demonstrations on anything Creo, Windchill, or anything PTC, you can just respond to the email invitations that I sent you, or you can contact us at info, I-N-F-O, at 3HTI.com, or you can call us at 866-624-3HTI. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day and rest of your week, and uh, we look forward to hosting you next week, too. Take care.